Thanks for checking out Open, the finest portable multi-tracks money can't buy. Here's the original idea for the build with the objective of getting all of the components for my portable recording setup in one place with access in the back for all the wires and connectors. And not long after I started executing that plan, I changed the scope of this project to basically build a makeshift laptop with all of these components integrated into it. Check out Fenced In Area on Instagram for free open source resources on that design process and how to build your own portable recording. Quarter. The first thing I did was get some lightweight aluminum angle from Home Depot to make a ledger for the false floor. After marking my length, I went after it with an angle grinder. Then I just took a minute to polish the ends of that aluminum and make sure all the burrs were removed. After I made sure they were the right length and polished on the ends, I started the process of riveting them to the inside of the case. This was a fairly easy process. The only thing I wish I'd have done differently was to put some washers on the outside of the case with the uh, rivets. You can notice it's kind of a marshmallowy soft material that's used for these side walls and uh, the rivets sink in a little bit more than I would have liked but not the end of the world. After I got everything riveted in I just pushed on it to make sure that I had a good solid foundation to put my false floor on. Next thing I had to do was remove the accordion portfolio from the top that also has accessory holders in it that left a bunch of glue and adhesive behind so I just kind of soaked that stuff out. There was also this weird little D-ring at the top of the lid of the case that I just kind of grinded and pulled out. I used half inch American Walnut as the false floor and the lid material. To get the width that I needed I just did a glue up of those walnut pieces. A glue up is really just strips of thinner wood that are glued together to make a wider piece. The case is only about 18 inches wide so I put three I think number 10 biscuits in and did the glue up from there. Uh, the biscuits just kind of help keep everything in alignment. Something like a dowel, a domino, or a biscuit keeps everything from sliding and keeps, keeps it flat. Once I had all the biscuits in and had everything good and glued up I just clamped everything together. To make sure I don't damage that nice expensive piece of walnut, I just put a biscuit between the workpiece and that big metal clamp. I use Gorilla Wood Glue for glue ups and make a point to get all of that uh, excess off before it dries. And this is a dry fit of the glue ups. The next step is to start planning the cut for the Novation Launch Key Mini, which was chosen because it seamlessly integrates with Ableton Live, which is one of the DAWs that's going to power this recorder. Once I had the cuts planned for the MIDI controller, I went to the table saw to start making the big cuts. To make the long cut in the back, I just started with the drill and followed up with the jigsaw. Anytime I'm making finished cuts like this, I do the initial cut with the jigsaw and then come in with the router table and give it a good, clean, straight, flat edge. When I changed the design of this project to recess the launch key into the false floor, one thing I didn't plan for was the USB connector in the back. So I took some measurements and just transferred those over to the bottom side of the false floor. Routers spin pretty fast, so I always prefer to use the router taper if possible, but in this instance I just freehanded it and cleaned it up with a rasp. Now that launch key looks like it was always meant to be in there. Next thing I had to do was to get the false floor ready for the analog to digital interface. I used the Audient ID4 for this build because in my opinion it is the smallest, most well built interface with the best preamps for the money. Don't let the fast time in the video fool you. This took a while. I think I mentioned earlier in the video that when I changed the design of this project, I basically decided to make a homemade laptop. So I settled on a portable Pixio monitor to install in the lid for the graphic display. Same concept here. Use a jigsaw for the big cuts and then use the router table to clean everything up and give a nice straight edge. Uh, you can notice I'm not freehanding any of this. I'm using the fence for my table saw that I use as the router table to keep everything good and straight. One tip is to get your jigsaw line as close to your final line as possible. Uh, it's just easier on your router bit. 
The large through cut you just saw me make was just big enough for the visible part of the screen I want to see. About three sides of the monitor have about a three quarter inch bezel uh, around it and the bottom of the screen has about a three inch bezel. I don't want any of that bezel to be seen so I'm going to recess the screen into the lid. Again, don't let the fast video time fool you. This is a really, really long process. One thing about woodworking is you can always take more wood off. You can't add it. So I just go slow and take, take material off at like a 64th or 32nd at a time when you're dealing with really precise electronic work like this. Here's a quick progress look of all the electronics that have been cut out for. That's the Audient ID4 in the top left of the false floor. When I redesigned this project to basically be a homemade laptop with portable recording capabilities, I decided to use a 2011 Mac Mini I found on Craigslist as the brains of the computer. And all of this audio software is really going to have that Mac Mini working hard, so I'm concerned that it's going to create a lot of heat. So um, I decided to get a little electronics fan and uh, make room for that. Getting that fan planned and installed was really the last piece of the hardware puzzle. And after that, this project really turned into an electronics project. So as I started the electronics part of this project, this little right angle XLR adapter that's going to plug into the Audient ID4 in the back was the biggest challenge probably of the project. I'm grinding out the back of the housing because the ID4 pushes all the way to the back of the briefcase. And this right angle XLR connector sticks out so far that it pushes the Audient ID4 into the back of the Novation Launch Key Mini. So I've got to figure out a way to make enough room. I eventually just ended up losing the housing altogether and just soldered my wire and cable directly to the XLR hots and ground. Ultimately I had to solder about five two-sided connections on this project but just showed you a couple here. When this project's done the ultimate connections I'd like to have on the outside of the case are an XLR microphone in, a quarter inch guitar in, an eighth inch headphone out, a quarter inch headphone out, a quarter inch left and right reference monitor out and an HDMI out so when I want to connect this recorder to a larger screen. The biggest problem I hit installing these connectors was this eighth inch headphone out and USB expansion connector. You can see where it hits the little aluminum bar on the bottom of the case and makes it stick out. And I can't move it up because the aluminum ledger on the inside of the case is at the top of it. So I got the angle grinder out and made some very slow, precise recalculations and it worked out great and brought that thing in really flush which you'll see here. In the redesign phase of this project, one of the reasons I didn't think I was going to be able to make a makeshift laptop work was because I wasn't sure how I was going to get a power and a signal cable from the Apple Mac Mini up to the Pixio portable monitor. The solution was to route out a little raceway for those wires and to also grind out some of that aluminum ledger and file it really nicely and finely and then take a little of this false floor corner off. And you can see it works really well in letting those cables freely slide as you open and close the lid. Once I got all of those connections made to the outside of the case, I wasn't really crazy about how it looked from inside the case. And although you'll never see it, I wanted to clean that up a little bit. So just made this little trim piece out of some quarter inch walnut. Getting towards the end here, I just took a six inch uh, sander, which is way too big of a sander for that little piece of wood, and just started cleaning things up, getting all the burrs off, and got it ready for finishing. The design inspiration for how I wanted the woodwork to finish is like the old Rupert Neve uh, consoles and everybody's favorite, the Mini Moog. I just always loved the way those two products marry just beautiful woodwork with really complex uh, electrical engineering. I used Odie's oil on the walnut and it delivered beautifully. Here I'm mounting the 2011 Mac Mini with a 3M Duralock and it worked beautifully. The next challenge was getting the Audient ID4 to exactly the right height so it could undermount to the walnut 
false floor. So I did lots of measuring and testing and just cut these little leg risers and glued them up and got the exact height that I needed. Clamped them together, let them dry, and then installed them with the 3M Duralock. I actually ended up mounting them uh, from side to side because it created this little channel in between them that I could use as a raceway to route wires. I'm going to let the video play here because this is really the first time that I installed all of the electronics to all the cable mounts and tested everything out. The Audient ID4 and the Novation Launch Key Mini as well as the monitor all plug into the Apple uh, Mac Mini. And I got to say, I wasn't really prepared for just how difficult it was going to be to get these homemade connectors and all of these components into this small enclosure. But we got there. And this is the final product just before I tested it for the very first time. Front and top view. Sorry if the video is a little shaky. That's the power cord. And that is the HDMI out and the reference monitor left and right output with the guitar and microphone inputs on this side. I know what everybody's wondering is does this thing really work? Uh, the plan is to install Pro Tools to the Mac Mini in the very very near future but I'm kind of excited to play with this guy so I went ahead and got GarageBand going and uh, recorded a few tracks and I'm going to show you just how easily I was able to just come in, plug this guy in, and pick up where I left off and lay down a rhythm guitar track. I just plugged in the uh, headphones, and now I'm going to plug in the guitar right to the side of the open. And first things first, I was so excited to start testing uh, this thing out that I didn't tune the guitar and I didn't download or, or install any plugins. So this is just kind of plugged straight in with. Um, a little reverb and um, I think that's about it. I'm currently designing a built-in mouse and keyboard situation for, for right now. I've just got these sitting on top here and thanks for watching.